Tonight, Uber's possible plan to sabotage Lyft. Netflix files a petition to stop the Comcast Time Warner cable merger. And is Apple planning a monster iPad? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 159 for Tuesday, August 26th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great tasting healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy delicious treats like baked cheddar potato fries. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Oh, hello there, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. Netflix has filed a petition to the FCC demanding that it deny the proposed merger between Comcast and Time Warner, which the company had previously promised to do. Netflix claims that it would result in, quote, serious public interest harm and cites examples of Comcast using network congestion as an excuse to shift Netflix traffic to paid internet connections and data caps that have been used to steer customers away from third-party streaming companies like Netflix, or Hulu. The company also disagrees with Comcast and Time Warner Cable's claims that there's enough competition in the market because DSL offerings from AT&T and Verizon are often insufficient for Netflix streaming. The company also notes it's too expensive for consumers to switch broadband services and often have zero alternatives, which would only worsen with a merger. Speaking of the FCC, the commission got a new chief technology officer. Chairman Tom Wheeler announced today that University of California, Irvine professor Scott Jordan is the new top tech advisor at the FCC. Jordan is focused on communications policy issues like net neutrality and fairness for different devices and pricing issues on the Internet. He previously served on the FCC's advisory committee committee for net neutrality regulations and going forward he'll provide technical advice across the fcc and will work with outside tech experts to make sure agency officials are doing all they can to use all the best technology the wall street journal is reporting that venture capital firm kleiner perkins caulfield and buyers is investing in snapchat but not just investing it would put the ephemeral messaging service at around a 10 billion dollar valuation of course, the journal is citing people familiar with the matter. Snapchat's valuation was about $2 billion last year. So why such a jump? Well, the journal cites a source briefed on the company's metrics that Snapchat now has over 100 million monthly active users, with about two-thirds of those users logging into the service every day. By comparison, WhatsApp, which was acquired by Facebook earlier this year for $19 billion, announced it has over 600 million monthly active users. They announced that this week. And Twitter has a market cap of about $29 billion and has 271 million monthly active users. So basically, these are crazy days. Bloomberg is reporting that Apple suppliers are getting ready to manufacture a new iPad that's bigger than the current 9.7-inch iPad Air with a screen measuring... 12.9 inches, that's diagonally, citing anonymous sources. Sales of iPads, which is Apple's second biggest product by revenue behind the iPhone, have declined for two straight quarters. Apple suppliers recently started manufacturing an updated 9.7-inch screen iPad and were also set to enter production of a new version of the iPad Mini, say people familiar with the plans. The devices are set to be available later this year in time for the holiday season. So who wants a bigger iPad is really the question. Probably businesses. Back in July, Apple unveiled a partnership with IBM, and CEO Tim Cook said part of the deal was to sell to corporations so they could be a catalyst for future iPad growth. Speaking of iPads, Los Angeles School Superintendent John Deasy has suspended future use of a $1 billion contract with Apple that was to provide every student with an iPad after a draft report of a district technology committee, which was obtained by the LA Times, claimed the technology effort showed problems with both the process and the implementation. Disclosures were also made that DZ and his top deputy had close ties to executives at Apple and Pearson, which is the company providing the curriculum on the devices. Yesterday, the teachers' union called for an official investigation of the original contracting process, and a source that the Times claims is close to the district said that LA Unified's Inspector General is planning to conduct additional interviews. Yesterday, we talked about Amazon buying video game streaming company Twitch for a reported $970 million, which was a surprise to a lot of people after about three months of reports that Google, not Amazon, was in talks to acquire Twitch. 
So what happened? A source tells Forbes that Google was unable to close the deal because it was concerned about potential antitrust issues that could have come with the acquisition. Google, of course, already owns YouTube, which competes with Twitch to broadcast and stream live on-demand video game sessions. A source says that because of these concerns, Google and Twitch couldn't come to an agreement on the size of a potential breakup fee in case the deal didn't go through. Coming up, what if Google Street View had sound? The website that lets you experience the ambient noises of the panoramas you visit. And up next, I'll chat with Casey Newton from The Verge about Uber's plan to sabotage Lyft. A little bit more information on that in just a minute. But first, let's talk about snacking. This is my favorite part of the show because I love snacking. And that's also why I love Nature Box because Nature Box snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, never anything artificial. And you know what? They taste really good. In fact, I've tried them all pretty much at this point at Twit, and I keep going back. NatureBox sends great tasting snacks right to your door with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. And you have a lot of choices. Here's how it works. You click on the continue button on the website to choose between your subscription options. Then you just place your order. As a member, you select which snacks you like in your monthly box. You can select by dietary needs, also by taste, maybe sweet is your bag or savory or spicy. And then the next time you get hungry and are ready to just eat whatever is around, you've got Nature Box. It's good for you. You can snack guilt-free with honey Dijon pretzels, blueberry nom noms. I know you guys like those. I certainly do. And over 100 more healthy snacks. And you can get 50% off your first box just by going to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to NatureBox for their support of tech news tonight and for keeping me full. All right, joining us now is Casey Newton, senior reporter over at The Verge. Hey, Casey. Hey, Sarah. Well, thanks so much for being here. You've had kind of a busy day. Uh, you wrote an article today that's getting a lot of attention uh, about Uber's playbook for sabotaging Lyft. Now, we've talked a little bit uh, in, in recent weeks that both Uber and Lyft have accused the other company of, of trying to sabotage their drivers by canceling rides and things like that, or sort of in order to you know, confuse the customer. So what is Uber's latest brand ambassador's program Operation Slog? That's right. So we knew that Uber and Lyft were both aggressively recruiting one another's drivers. What we didn't really know was how they were doing it. So what my story outlines is one of the strategies Uber uses to recruit drivers on its platform, which has two benefits. One, it gives Uber more drivers, but two, it undermines Lyft by preventing them from getting a foothold in a new city. So in the run-up to Uber or to a Lyft's launch in New York City last month, Uber organized a street team made up of what it calls brand ambassadors, which are contractors that it hires through a third-party temp agency, basically. It outfits these contractors with burner cell phones, valid credit cards, encourages them to make dummy Lyft accounts, and then they just spend all day uh, recruiting Lyfts and trying to get those drivers to come onto the Uber platform. Now, I guess you could, you know, at the very least call these tactics shady, but is anything in here illegal? That's a question that we're still investigating. I'm not a lawyer uh, for the first piece of this story. We kind of wanted to outline the practices, but it's something that we're making inquiries about and we're hoping to have some more uh, insight on that for you shortly. Okay, so uh, you wrote the article. Uh, has Uber responded to, to anything, any of these claims, uh, anyone from the company trying to set the story straight? Um, we have seen uh, a number of things. I had contacted Uber asking them for comment earlier in the day. Um, rather than comment back to me, they published a blog post that outlines what Operation Slog is, uh, which of course conveniently omits a lot of the uh, facts in my story. Um, we've since seen that they've characterized some of the, uh, some mysterious parts of my story to be patently false. Uh, they said that to NBC News. They didn't say what was false. Uh, so hopefully over the next, you know, short period of time, we'll find out what, if anything, Uber uh, objects to. Um, but uh, certainly we we stand by our story. It's also worth checking out the uh, Twitter feed of uh, Travis Kalanick, Uber's founder and CEO. He's at Travis K on Twitter. And um, 
uh, upon my reading of it, there was nothing in the story that he objected to other than people's reaction to it. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, what he has to say is, look, uh, yeah, we recruit people. This is how you recruit people. It's no different than me picking up a phone and calling you at your office saying, come work for us. So he doesn't see anything wrong with this practice. Um, and for what, it, for what it's worth, the story you know that I wrote doesn't take a position on whether this is a good or a bad thing. We just thought it was a fascinating illustration of how cutthroat Uber is as a business and the lengths it's willing to go to to undermine its competitors. Obviously, you know, to use an industry buzzword, Uber has obviously disrupted this market uh, may maybe more so in the last few years than any other company I can think of that makes an app. What is it, what is this, uh, what does this do to the people who are using Uber? I mean, I'm, I'm an almost daily user of the Uber app. How many customers, if they know about these tactics, do you think could be turned off to the experience or does it really matter? Um, I assume that to most people it doesn't matter. Uh, my Twitter feed has been lit up today with people saying that uh, that they're disgusted by these tactics, that they're going to boycott Uber, or that they're switching to Lyft. So uh, I assume that we are going to see, you know, a, a small minority of people who want to switch over um, because of tactics like this. Um, and I do think that there is a danger, as with any company, that if you're known as um, somebody who engages in the shadiest of tactics in order to get ahead, then it could turn people off and drive people to your competitors. But, you know, mo but, but I know so many people who say, you know what, I don't trust anyone at Uber. It seems like a really shady company, but man, it's an incredible product and I couldn't live without it. And right now, Uber seems to be totally comfortable uh, with that as its reputation. Casey Newton is a senior reporter over at The Verge. Thanks so much for joining us. Good to My see pleasure. you. And uh, let folks know where they can keep up with more of your work. That's right. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Casey Newton and make uh, theverge.com your homepage and refresh it multiple times every day. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Casey. Thanks, guys. All right. Finally, get ready to be transported to a faraway place. Well, maybe it doesn't have to be that far away, but let's get crazy with the Google Street View, but not actually with Google Street View that you're using your eyes for. You're actually using your ears. This is really cool. It's called Sounds of Street View, and it's a new tool for the third party company for your browser that adds ambient site-specific noise to a few of the panoramic photos that are already on Google Maps. Now, it's pretty limited right now. You've got sounds recorded at the Place du Palais in Avignon, France, Hapuna Beach in Hawaii, one of the islands anyway, Balboa Park in San Diego, California. So there's a lot of room for growth here. And the noises are also looping clips. So it's not exactly like being there but it's certainly a start. I really like where they're going with this. The company behind the project is Italian hearing aid seller Amplifone, which has opened its code up on GitHub to allow other developers to also create sound maps for other places around the world. I can't, see, can't wait to see where this goes. And that is it, or hear where this goes. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Please write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today. That is tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.